infirmities, medicine for the soul. How do you deal with all of your infirmities? Last week, I, I watched as Simone Biles, who in my opinion is one of the greatest athletes the world has ever seen. I know people will argue it, but that's, that's my opinion. I watched as she was criticized for a very critical decision that she had made in regards to her mental health. And I tell you, honestly, the criticism that she faced, it, it made me want to focus in on mental health in my sermon for this week. The reason being is because for far too long, we, mankind, we have made light of the subject of mental health issues. And honestly speaking, collectively as a church, we haven't did that much better as, and when it comes to focusing in on, when it comes to talking about mental health issues as well. The reason why I feel that this happens is because uh, we, we, we take for granted what everybody deals with. We take for granted with, with what everybody goes through. Mm -hmm. But I believe that this is something that we should certainly focus on as a church. I believe this is something that we should focus on a great deal more. Uh, the reason being is because all of us, all of us live in this very same world. We live in a world that is always pressing down on us. We live in a world that is always pressing down on us with burden after burden over and over and over again. And unfortunately, many of us, we walk around trying to carry the weight of all of those burdens. I tell you, trying to bear the weight of all those burdens trying to bear the weight of the world, I tell you today that it can be very taxing. Yeah. It can not only be very taxing, mm -hmm. it can cause both anxiety and it can cause stress as well. None of which would be good for our mental health. Yeah. All right. Now, while we always take into consideration our physical and our mental health, I tell you that there is another facet of our health that influences our physical, that influences our mental, and that influences our emotional health as well that I believe that we have to take a look at as well. Yeah. All right. From this facet of health, I tell you all of our infirmities that we bear are born. Mm -hmm. So when we start talking about dealing with our infirmities, I believe that, that we must go to the source of our infirmities. Right. In other words, we must go to the source of our problems mm -hmm. today. Scripture shows us that there is actually a remedy to all of our health issues, mm -hmm. whether they be physical, whether they be mental, or whether they be emotional. Scripture shows us that there is a remedy, yeah. that there is a solution mm -hmm. to all of our problems, that there is a solution to all of our infirmities. Yeah. So what I want to do here today is I want to take a look mm -hmm. at what Scripture says is the remedy, what Scripture says is the solution to all of our infirmities. So today, what I want to do here is I want to take a look here at uh, the Gospel of Luke. I, I want right. to direct your attention right. to Luke's Gospel. Mm -hmm. And I want to take a look here at two examples of how God dealt with our infirmities. Yeah. Yeah. Infirmities, you should know, is defined as both physical and mental weakness. So mm -hmm. keep that in mind as we go. I want to, I want to make an important connection to the source of so many of our physical, mental, 
and emotional infirmities mm -hmm. here today. The reason being is that in order for us to remedy our infirmities, then our best bet is to take care of them at the source of our problems. Mm -hmm. Over in the 13th chapter of Luke's gospel, I want you to take a look at the 10th through the 17th verse here. And over in Luke's gospel, we're going to be taking a look at an event that was recorded here that involved Jesus and a woman who we are told in scripture had an infirmity and that this infirmity was for 18 years. Mm -hmm. She had an infirmity, yeah. we are told, for 18 years. In this passage of scripture, we are told here that her infirmity was that she was bent over. That's right. And she was unable to stand up straight. She could not look up straight. We see that there in the 11th verse. So what this means, what this tells us is that her infirmity was a physical infirmity. Yeah. Yeah. Now, let us note that scripture tells us that she was again physically crippled. But let us note here that she was physically crippled by a spirit mm -hmm. of infirmity. Do we all see that there? Yes. All right. Now, what this means is that an evil spirit, a demon, an entity was the cause of this woman's crippling infirmity. All right. All right. Do we all see that there? Now, in order for her physical infirmity to be healed, I want you to note here that Jesus, God in the flesh, mm -hmm. was required to step in. We'll see here in the 12th verse that Jesus simply called her forward. The woman that came to him and Jesus said to her, woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. No. So the question that someone may have is why was Jesus required to step in for an infirmity that appears to have been a physical infirmity? Mm -hmm. There's an important connection here. There's something going on here that I want us to note that I want us to notice here today. In another example here in Luke's gospel, mm -hmm. I believe you will all be very familiar with this example because I have preached from it before. If you're following along here with me now, let us note here from this passage of scripture that again, the source of the man's mental infirmity 
was an evil spirit. Mm -hmm. This evil spirit, we'll see there in the 30th verse, actually named itself. Mm -hmm. It called itself Legion. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, let us notice something here again in this passage of Scripture. In order for this man's mental infirmity to be remedied, in order for it to be healed, we'll see again here that Jesus was required to step in. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Scripture tells us that Jesus commanded the unclean spirit out of the man. Yeah. And we are told that Jesus commanded it into some nearby swine, mm -hmm. which we then see ended up drowning in a nearby lake. <laughs> then we are told here in this passage of scripture, after this man's mental Infirmity was removed mm -hmm. after he was healed. We are told that the people that they heard about it yeah. and that they came from out of the city mm -hmm. out into the country where he was yeah. and they found the man we are told sitting at the feet of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And we are told that he was clothed and that this man was now in his quote unquote Right mind. This man, he had a mental infirmity. He had mental issues, if you will. And we are again told that Jesus, God in the flesh, stepped in to remove that infirmity. Doctors could not heal the woman who had her infirmity that we saw in the 13th chapter of Luke's gospel. And they couldn't quite figure out back then how to deal with mental issues as well. So they sent him away, just like how some folks send people off the psych wards now. And we are told in both instances that God was required to step in. Jesus is God in the flesh. You hear me say that all the time. God had to step in to, re to remedy the infirmities. He had to step in to heal these people. In both of these examples, Again, there's a very important connection to our physical, mm -hmm. to our mental, and to our emotional health mm -hmm. that I believe yeah. is clear, mm -hmm. that I believe is very evident, mm -hmm. whether you recognize it or not. We are going to point it out here today mm -hmm. because it is important for us to pay attention to this connection because this connection, I tell you today, it is still very much present in our world today. All right. We often overlook this connection because we hardly ever think about it. Yeah, yeah. But you have heard me say this before. We have these physical bodies. Mm -hmm. They come in all shapes. They come in all sizes. They come in, in different colors as well, don't they? But these physical bodies is not our true form. Mm -hmm. Our true form is that we are spirits. We are spirits. You've heard me say this before. We are spirits trapped in this shell that is our body. Right. It is important for us to understand that when God created us, mm -hmm. when he created mankind, scripture tells us that he breathed into man's nostrils and man became a living being. Man became a living soul. I always point this out to us because I truly want people to understand that we are more than just this physical body. I also point this out to you today because I want you to understand that there are two domains present in our world. What I mean by this is that there is a physical domain and then there is a spiritual domain, both of which I tell you today are connected. All right. All right. Scripture makes this point clear to us as well. 
We'll see that to the Corinthians, Paul said, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God and you are not your own? For you were brought at a price, Paul said, therefore glorify God in your body. And Paul said, and in your spirit, mm -hmm. which are God's. You see, we should understand that both the physical and spiritual domains, I tell you today, that they are connected. We should understand today that the physical and the spiritual are intertwined. Mm -hmm. Solomon wrote that from the heart, meaning the spirit, Solomon wrote that from the heart spring the issues of life. So when I say that the spiritual and the physical domains are intertwined, I want you to understand that means that they are united. Yes. All right. They are united in a way that one can influence the other. See, our spirit is the springboard to what we think. Our spirit is the springboard to how we feel. Our spirit is the springboard to how we act. All right. All right. The very actions we take, mm -hmm. they are born in your soul. A lot of people think it's born in the brain, but our spirit is what feeds our actions, everything originates from our spirit and is then manifested from us out into the world. Now on the flip side, what we go through physically, what we go through mentally, how we feel emotionally, it can influence our spirit. All right. Do you All understand right. that today? Mm -hmm. and, and when our spirit is influenced from the outside, guess what? it loops all around again because the spirit then again starts to influence what we think mm -hmm. starts to influence how we feel and it starts to influence our actions again. So I hope you see this intertwining connection and I hope that you understand this and I hope that you see the significance of it as mm -hmm. well today. Mm -hmm. You see, when we can recognize that the source of many of our infirmities, are actually originating from our spirit, mm -hmm. then we can take the best course of action to remedy our infirmities. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, we physically do not have the means to remedy what we are going through in our spirit. Mm -hmm. we, we physically do not have the means to resolve any problems that is going on in our spirits today. Yet we know who can provide a remedy to all of what we are going through. Yeah. We know who can solve all of our problems. Yeah. We know who can help us in our infirmities. Yeah. The question for all of us today is, are we calling on him as our doctor to resolve all of our spiritual health issues. I believe many of us, we show more concern for what we are going through physically. Many of us show more concern for what we're going through mentally and mm -hmm. emotionally. We show great concern for our, our physical health. Right. We show great concern for our mental health. We show great concern for our emotional health. Mm -hmm. How many of us are concerned about our spiritual right. health? Yeah. How many of us are concerned about the infirmities that we are facing in our soul? Mm -hmm. We should have a greater concern for what we are going through spiritually today. Yeah. Yeah. That said, I tell you that our spiritual health, uh, it should, we should have a, a great concern for it because everything originates there. Mm -hmm. What you think, how you feel, your actions. Again, we live in a world that is always pressing down on us. We live in a world that is always weighing us down. And many of us, again, we try to carry the weight of the world on our shoulders. But we absolutely know that trying to carry the, the weight of the world, we know that it can be physically, we know that it can be mentally, we know that it can be emotionally, taxing. Yeah. But guess what it is also doing to your spirit mm -hmm. today? Yeah. 
It is taxing your spirit. When you're trying to walk around, when you're trying to carry all of those burdens, guess what it is doing to your spirit? It is stressing your spirit. It is, in other words, it is troubling your soul today. So our taxed and our stressed and our troubled spirit, I tell you today that it often needs medicine. We often need medicine for our soul today. And only the Lord can provide the medicine Mm -hmm. that you and I need in our spirit. Mm -hmm. But again, I asked the question, how many of us are actually calling the doctor? Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we rarely call our doctors in the world. We don't, we, we don't want to tell them when we are going through something, we can visit the doctor. We can know that something is ailing us. Mm -hmm. And and many of us will refuse to tell the doctor what we're going through. Mm -hmm. The same thing applies with God. How many of us are actually going to the Lord today with our burdens? How many of us are going to the Lord today with our anxieties, with what is troubling us? How many of us are going to God seeking the Lord in our infirmities today? A spirit that is troubled, a spirit that is taxed, burdened, and overly stressed. I want you to know today that it can lead to two types of spirits of infirmities that can affect us in our mental, that can again affect us in our emotional and that it can affect us in our physical. Mm-hmm. When we are affected mentally, our emotions and our actions are both cr- compromised. Yeah, yeah. And so a taxed and a burdened and a troubled and a stressed spirit, I want you to know today, can lead to a spirit of madness, which is insanity. Mm -hmm. It can lead to a spirit of fear, which we also know is a spirit that is paralyzed. Mm -hmm. In, In both forms of these spirits, in both types of spirits, we are troubled. We are either moving recklessly Mm -hmm. or we are unable to move. And and that's very dangerous for us, especially one who is a child of God. We should always be moving in our faith. But a spirit of madness Mm -hmm. is going to cause us to move recklessly. Mm -hmm. It's no good for us to move recklessly as a child of God. A spirit of fear is going to paralyze us. And as you have heard me say before, and I just preached about this last month, it is no good for us to be paralyzed in our soul. You see, the devil's greatest attack against all of us is an attack directed at our spirit for the purpose of stressing it, for the purpose of troubling it. Mm -hmm. He knows that troubling our spirit today can influence us mentally, can influence us emotionally, and it can influence us physically as well. The devil wants you to act recklessly. The devil wants you to be paralyzed in your spirit. You see, we are in a wrestling match today. We are in a wrestling match today against someone who desires to compromise us in our spirit. He's essentially like a virus Mm -hmm. that affects our body and is often trying to compromise our body. The devil is trying to compromise our soul today. Remember that Paul said to the Ephesians, Mm -hmm. we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, Mm -hmm. against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Do not forget that. If many of our infirmities are born from spiritual entities, Mm -hmm. then what can we do to combat these principalities? Mm -hmm. What can we do to combat these powers, these rulers of darkness and Mm -hmm. and spiritual hosts of wickedness Mm -hmm. that are that are causing infirmities in our soul today? Mm -hmm. The answer, I believe, is again quite clear to us. We should turn to God. We should turn to the Lord so that he, the Lord, our God, can provide a remedy to combat the viruses that are trying to plague our spirit. 
God can combat our infirmities on a level that we are simply incapable of doing. Mm -hmm. Whatever is troubling our spirit and therefore affecting us physically, mentally, and emotionally today, I tell you today that God is the remedy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God is the remedy for all of us. Mm -hmm. When it comes to dealing with our infirmities, again, whether they are physical, mm -hmm. whether they are mental, or whether they are emotional, my favorite passage of scripture to how God views them and to how the Lord deals with our infirmities. Mm -hmm. My favorite passage of scripture is what we read from in our responsive reading today from the sixth chapter of Matthew's gospel. And I direct your attention back over to that passage of scripture. Now I want you to look at the 25th through the 34th verse there in the sixth chapter of Matthew's gospel. And when you get there, you see that 25th verse and you will see that Jesus says the first thing right off the top, Jesus says, do not what worry. says, do not worry about your life, mm -hmm. what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body what you will put on. Look at that. I said, do not worry. He's talking about again, the mental. He's talking about the emotional there. Okay. He's talking about the, the physical there as well. God's thoughts towards our infirmities again is this, and you'll see this in my key verse, which is that 34 verse. God said again, do not what worry. said, do not worry. Yeah, yeah. Said, don't worry about tomorrow uh -huh. for tomorrow will worry about its own things is what the Lord said there. Uh -huh. See the Lord, he is declaring to us uh -huh. today. Uh -huh not to let the things of the world stress us out. Yeah. The Lord is declaring to us today mm -hmm. not to let the world burden us. All right. Don't, don't, don't let the world stress you in your soul. Mm -hmm. Don't let the world burden you in your soul today. That is what God is saying to you. The Lord is saying to you, you don't have anything to worry about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I believe that the Lord follows the, that up with, with, with saying, why are you so worried? Mm -hmm. Don't you know that I am here? No. We've seen what God did for the woman who had an infirmity for 18 years. Mm -hmm. The man who had a, a mental infirmity, scripture told us that he had it for a quote unquote long time. We see what God did for him. So why do we worry about our infirmities? Right. Why are we always letting something of the world trouble us? Mm -hmm. We let our bills trouble us. <laughs> we, we let our jobs trouble us. Yeah. We let these fools who are out here in the world today, we let them get to us as well. Well, when God has said that he's going to take care of all of it, yeah. but we study worrying, mm -hmm. stressing, taxing our spirits and, and then letting it influence our thoughts mm -hmm. to having these mental breakdowns. When God said, stop doing it. Yeah. Yeah. That is what the Lord has, has said to us. Mm -hmm. God, he said, do not worry. This, I tell you, is something that reminds me of when I was a little kid mm -hmm. and I would be afraid of something. I'd be fearful. You know, I was a little kid. I didn't know anything about anxiety, but, you know, you, you would worry about some things. Mm -hmm. You'd be afraid of some things. But it reminds me of when my dad would just all of a sudden appear. He would just come into the room or he would have something to say. And it reminds me of, of 
when he would be there, all of a sudden I'd be filled with all kind of confidence and mm-hmm. I, would, I would be comforted. In other words, I, I would feel safe. Mm-hmm. I would feel secure. I don't know if, if all of you felt the same way about your mom or oh, your dad or sure. aunts or uncles and so forth. Mm-hmm. But that's how I felt when I was afraid and, and dad would be there with me all of a sudden. I wouldn't be afraid anymore mm-hmm. because I knew dad, dad was, was my hero. I knew that he would be able to solve that. He, he would be able to fix anything. I didn't have anything to, to be afraid of. All right, All right. There was safety and security with him simply being around. Mm-hmm. God wants you to feel the same way about him today. Oh, yeah. The Lord wants us to feel this same sort of comfort. He wants us to feel this same sort of security with him today. When it comes to all of the things that that worry us, that stress us, that tax us in our spirits today, God wants you to feel safe and secure about him being around. You don't have anything to stress about. As we'll see here in the next verse, in the 26th verse here, We'll see that Jesus, he spoke of the birds of the air. Mm -hmm. He said that they neither sow nor reap nor gather into borns. Said, yet your heavenly father feeds them. You see, the birds of the air, they live without stressing. Mm -hmm. They live without stressing over having to sow. They live without stressing about having to reap or having to gather in food. Mm -hmm. You see, surely the birds, they have to eat in order to be able to live. Mm -hmm. But they don't stress about it. They are living a stress-free life. Mm -hmm. Imagine living your life where you're living stress-free in your soul today. Because you know that the Lord is caring for you just as he cares for the birds of the air. To further show how the Lord cares for us, Jesus then spoke of the lilies and the grass of the field. Mm -hmm. He spoke of them in the same manner as he spoke of the birds of the air. Jesus said that the Lord clothes the grass and he said that the lilies of the field that they grow and that they do not toil, nor do they spin. In other words, both the lilies and the grass of the field, they are living stress-free. They are living a stress-free life Mm -hmm. with no burdens, with no anxiety about how they are going to live. Mm -hmm. Because we are told again there in scripture that God cares for them. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus asked an all important question to us. He asked, are you not more, are you not of more value than they? The they being the birds, the grass and the lilies. Are you not of more value than they, than the things of this world that that God is caring for in what we would call nature. All right, all right. Are you not of more value? Surely we must be of more value, right? Because again, God breathed into our nostrils. Yes, yes. He didn't breathe into the bird's nostrils. He didn't breathe into to, to the grass and into the lilies. He breathed into my nostrils. Yes, yes. Your nostrils. So so surely we must be of, of more value. Yes, yes. I believe that God cares for us in even graver fashion mm-hmm. than the birds of the air and both the lilies and the grass of the field. Mm-hmm. So with that being the case, right. the Lord wants to take away the source of our problems. Mm -hmm. He wants to take away your worries. Mm -hmm. He wants to take away your anxieties. He wants to take away the things that may be troubling you in your spirit, Mm -hmm. that may be causing physical health issues, that may be causing mental health issues, Mm -hmm. that may be causing emotional health issues away. God wants to take away those things. Mm 
just as he did for the woman who had an infirmity for 18 years, just as he did with the man who had a mental infirmity. God wants to take away our infirmities today. I believe that the Lord cares for us in in an even greater fashion Mm -hmm. than he does the birds, the lilies, and the grass. Mm -hmm. We'll see here that in order for us to deal with our infirmities, we must do something. Mm -hmm. There is something that all of us must do. We must do as the woman, and we must do as the man did. The woman, when Jesus called her forward, Guess what she did? Mm -hmm. She moved forward. She came to him. The man, before Jesus could even get onto land, the man was coming to Jesus. Jesus has said to us, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That is what Jesus has said to us. He has called for us to come to him, come to him. How many of us are actually moving forward to him? The doctor has called us to come to him. How many of us are actually going to the doctor? Or how many of us are afraid to go to the doctor today? The Lord desires for you to live your life without stress. He desires for you to live your life without anxiety in your spirit, Mm -hmm. in your soul. And he tells us directly to go to him so that he can can bear the brunt of 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 the source of our infirmities Mm -hmm. so that he can bear our burdens so that he can bear our anxieties, so that he can provide medicine for what's taxing him and what's stressing us in our spirit. God has said, come get your medicine today for your physical health issues, for your mental health issues, for your emotional health issues. How many of us are actually going to him to get the medicine? The Lord will remove the weight of your stress, of your anxiety, and of your burdens. He'll take that weight off of your shoulders, and he'll happily do it. Solomon wrote in Proverbs that a merry heart does good like medicine, Mm -hmm. but a broken spirit dries the bone. Mm -hmm. That's what Solomon said. The removal of our stress, the removal of our anxiety, the removal of our burdens on a spiritual level will make your soul happy. A happy soul, a happy spirit leads to a happy place mentally, leads to a happy place emotionally, and therefore leads to a happy place physically as well. Say, in order for us to deal with our infirmities today, in order to deal with our physical health, mm-hmm. our mental health, especially yeah, yeah. our emotional health. I believe that the Lord is required to step in. Oh, yes. And I believe that, that we must come to recognize mm-hmm. that God is a healer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, we must come to recognize that the Lord is a, a healer of all of our infirmities, Mm -hmm. whether it's physical, whether it is mental, whether it is emotional. He's a healer for all of our infirmities because I believe that they begin in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And he is the doctor for your soul today. When we recognize this, when we can recognize this, okay, again, we must turn to the Lord when we are in need of help. We must turn to him. Sadly, unfortunately, many of us refuse to go see the doctor all right, all right. when we are in need of his healing touch. Mm-hmm. There was an old song that was sung. The singer said that Jesus is my doctor yeah. mm-hmm. and that he writes out all of my prescriptions. Mm-hmm. And, and what was the last part that that song said? He gives me what? Mm-hmm. All my medicine mm-hmm. in my room. Okay. We, we all know that. We, we, we've all heard that before. But we get so forgetful yeah, yeah. of what God can do for mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. 
let us stop forgetting what God can do for us. Jesus has declared to us today Mm -hmm. that those who ask receive and who he who seeks find and and, and to him who knocks, it will be opened. Let me tell you something. There is absolutely nothing wrong with recognizing when you need help. There is absolutely nothing wrong when you recognize that you need to take a break from this world to go see the doctor. There is absolutely nothing wrong when we need a break. So so I, I say to you today, take a break sometimes. When, when you need to go and, and, and see the doctor that is God, go and see him. He's a comforter. Yeah. He's a healer. Yeah. He's a sounding board. If you just need somebody to sound off to go and see him. Mm-hmm. And I tell you today that the Lord is going to provide the medicine that you need. God is going to heal you. He's going to heal you in your soul today. Yeah. And you are going to be better physically. You're going to be better mentally. You're going to be better emotionally as well. Again, I don't know what anybody is dealing with. I don't know what anybody is going through today, but I do know that all of us are going through something. I know that all of us have our burdens. All of us are troubled by something. I know someone who can solve your problems. Go see him today. Amen. 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 Amen.